What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around at the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today, we're looking at the Lagavulin 12 Cast Strength 2021. Stick around. All right, so we have a hype beast kind of day today. We're looking at a Lagavulin. I've got the very popular, much lauded 12 year old cast strength. This is the 2021 edition and apparently everyone loves this one. I mean, people love this stuff every year, but the 2021 in particular does seem to have struck a nerve with a lot of reviewers. Uh, but yeah, all of these 12 year old releases, they're always so, so popular. People love how intense they are. It's well known for being Lagavulin's most punchy kind of in your face release. And it's one that's been around for ages. I have very fond memories of this whiskey going way, way back. Uh, I've had a few of these over the years, less so over the last few years, but still, it is a whiskey that I like to check in on from time to time. Um, my favorite came a good decade before this one. I really, really love the 2011 release. I've also had the 2012, the 2015, uh, I think one or two since then as well, but I didn't own the full bottle. But yeah, this is one that I always look forward to coming back to. I always enjoy it. Um, you know, it's a classic, it's a legend. We have the age, we have the intensity, that cast strength punchiness, and most importantly, we have the Laga House style on full display. This is one of the few Laga Volan releases that's presented in a very honest, straightforward kind of way, and that's the big pitch. It's whiskey that's basically free of any bells and whistles, so it's precisely the kind of thing that whiskey purists like, and for that reason, it's been a critical darling for years. And you know, an unadulterated, refill matured, age dated cast strength Lagavulin does sound pretty good, especially after everyone's been ranting and raving about this one recently. I did have to try it for myself. So let's jump into our review, see what our whiskey is all about. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So this one's cast strength. We got some nice heft at 56.5%, uh, non chill filtered, natural colored, yay. Absolutely beautiful color to this whiskey, and I gotta say, I do love the bottles. Um, they might be a bit much for some, but I'm a fan. You know, the older releases, the older Cast Strength 12s, had just kind of your standard Lagavulin and bottle design, and these ones are getting a lot more creative, a lot more attention grabbing, and no doubt that's a tactic to lure in collectors every year, but it is a good look. And I'll admit, it is effective marketing. When I look at this, I want to own the whole set, I want to buy up the whole collection. And I would if I could probably, but then I'd be feeding the machine, which kind of premiumizes these releases more and more every year. And that's definitely annoying. Still, I do love the bottle. I'm going to score it five out of five. In terms of information, natural cast strength from exclusively refilled casks gives us the ABV and not much else. So for information, it's very limited here. We've got some interesting blurbs on the sleeve. I'm going to read some to you. As our fable goes, the King of Isla seen upon the crest of Lagavulin was no ordinary feline, but a lion rampant who prowled the grounds of an Isla castle, a fresh victor, intense in power and pride. Uh, that's great, interesting, wonderful, I love it. Let's go back to the beginning, as our fable goes. Now, I don't know if that's a creative choice or, did you, did you make your own fable? Like if I go to Isla and I ask around about this lion legend, are they gonna know what I'm talking about or did you just make this shit up? I'm genuinely curious. One of the oldest distilleries on the island, Lagavulin's early leader, James Logan Mackey, and his unrelenting nephew, Peter J. Mackey, known as Restless Pete, were renowned for going the extra mile in the name of achieving powerful flavor. Um, you know, I gotta say, unrelenting nephews are the best kind of nephews. My nephew just, this kid is always relenting. Kids in 2022, what are you gonna do? Unrelenting nephews, best nephews. Anyway, apparently you can taste these guys' tenacious spirit in every sip of this legendary dram. Um, <laughs> you know, Legavolin makes good whiskey. Uh, it's kind of shocking that in 2022, or I guess 2021, uh, companies are still marketing this way. It's ridiculous. I did add a touch of water. Let's try the nose. Wow, okay, punchy and intense. You know, uh, Lagavulin 16 always goes in such a pretty direction. This one goes in the opposite direction, which is really cool. Peat, um, citrus, and it's an interesting citrus. It's like lemon lime or like lemon lime soda. Some tar, some petrol, uh, 
some flint, paraffin, medicine. We also have salt. We have some black licorice or like all sorts candy, something like that. And this is interesting. We have hot dogs, just regular American hot dogs. Um, it's a good nose. I especially like the sort of lemon lime soda type flavor in here. It's very interesting. Let's try the palette. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Really nice oily texture here. Um, big peat. Again with that lemon lime soda note. Uh, lots of salty maritime notes. Uh, we have grilled squid, we have seaweed, there's petrol, there's medicine cabinets, there's band-aids, and some black tea. And our finish. Hmm. Okay. Um, more minerality coming through here. Big peat. Uh, there's some very charred meaty notes in here, like a big barbecue flavor, uh, and more of that black tea. Uh, our finish is not quite as complex as the arrival or the palette, but it's long, it's satisfying, and it's surprisingly sweet. All right, so as I said, it's been a while since I had this one, and we definitely do have batch variations between each of the releases. This one in particular has a certain sweetness that I'm really getting behind. It's that lemon lime soda kind of Sprite type note, um, and I love it. It's not something I remember from the previous releases, although it might have been there. I'm just going off of memory. Either way, it works. There's quite a few things that work for me in here, but it didn't really work at first. I'll admit, when I first popped this bottle, I was a little bit disappointed. It felt a little bit more basic and a little bit younger than those previous releases. Luckily, all of that changed. Flash forward a couple more drams and a couple weeks later and now we're talking. Uh, this stuff opened up beautifully and that actually makes for another interesting contrast between this release and previous ones. Uh, the older ones tended to be at their best right after being freshly popped and my friends and I knew it. In fact, we always dug into a freshly popped bottle a little bit more than we otherwise would just because we knew that that was when the whiskey was at its peak. And that's the opposite of what we're getting with our 2021 release here. So if you've got the newer one, I would suggest spending more time with it, letting it open up a little bit more. Now that this one has opened up, I'm going to jump on the bandwagon. I absolutely love this stuff. It's amazing whiskey. My score is going to be 87. It's a straightforward, wonderful, honest representation of the Laga House style. And who's not going to like that? Uh, so I am sort of going to recommend this one. But let's talk about value first. I'm not totally convinced this is a good value buy anymore. These limited editions get more and more expensive every year, and we always pay it. You know, there's the fancy new art, there's the collectible looking bottles, and of course we have the undeniably delicious whiskey inside. And if you separate the whiskey from those other things, it's wonderful. And you know, they always feel so special. They feel like something we should savor and enjoy. It feels like we're getting stuff that we couldn't otherwise get, and that's true. But why is that true? Because of Diageo. Uh, Diageo almost never gives us craft presented whiskeys, with very few exceptions. Consistently, they give us low ABV, colored, chill filtered whiskeys. These are good whiskeys with their quality stifled. And then once a year, lucky us, Diageo bestows upon us the prospect of tasting their naturally presented cast strength whiskeys. These are whiskeys with collectible bottles, a great look. These are whiskeys from their top distilleries. So, how fortunate for us. Unfortunately, the brand decides or the company decides they can charge an arm and a leg for the opportunity to taste such rarities. I don't like it. Anyway, um, okay, let's talk about Surge over at Whiskey Fun. He's a great reviewer. I've relied on his reviews and his website for well over a decade now, someone I admire and someone I respect. But he awarded this one of the best bang for your buck buys of 2021. And I guess in his review, he tried it before it got released. And he said that regardless of what they charge, this is going to be worth the money. And I have to disagree with him there. Um, and you know, to be fair, I guess if a 40 year old Glenn Grant is your casual Tuesday sipper, then this won't feel that expensive to you. But this is too expensive. This is a good whiskey. I've said it 10 times already. There's no doubt about it. 
but you know this was already quite expensive 10 years ago and it's gotten much more expensive now especially with all the new labels and stuff it's so collectible you know they've made an art out of premiumizing their good naturally presented whiskies meanwhile consistently cutting corners with their standard lines I think it's a shitty tactic and I find it annoying. Uh, you know, for the same price, I can get 18 year olds, I can get 21 year olds, I can get other cast strength naturally presented whiskeys and still have plenty of change left over. Why am I paying so much for this? And again, this is a very honest distillate driven whiskey, which I really do appreciate, but I don't think it was especially expensive to make. You know, when you're using exclusively refill casks, um, that's not an especially complex or expensive way to make your whiskey. So where's all my extra money going to? It's not going to any expensive wine casks. Now, I'm sure there is some cask play at work, but I don't think any more than than usual. Uh, it's just a 12 year old that's matured in refill casks. And yes, I know cask strength, you're not watering it down, so you do have to produce less bottles. But the price, man, the price is too high. I think the ratio between the cost of production and the retail price is getting way out of whack. So unless you're a huge Lagavulin fan, unless you always buy these 12 year olds, maybe you're a collector, unless that's the case, I'm not really gonna recommend this whiskey to you. I don't think it's reasonable anymore. I think the prices are getting out of hand, so I'm gonna call them out, but it's delicious whiskey. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you wanna help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. That's always appreciated. And I do wanna hear from you. What are your thoughts on the 2021 Diageo special releases? What are your thoughts on the Liga 12 in particular? Do you think it's worth it? Do you think I'm out of line here? Or yeah, tell me what you think. Also down in the comments, let me know what you wanna see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.